Hello, everyone. Yes, happy Lunar New Year. Absolutely. Welcome to day four. No, not day four, day three. <laughs> Welcome to day three. Today, we're going to be talking about the power of our inner child and how your inner child can either become your most powerful ally for you to share your soul's medicine like an essential, the most powerful ally, or it can become your greatest saboteur, right? The, the part of you that creates the most sabotage, the most stickiness, the most drama, not because it's a bad part, because it's a, such an important, essential part of us. So we're going to be talking about that today. And so I'm really um, inviting you to check in right now. Let's just take a few cleansing breaths. Bring our awareness to our body. Turn on that magnet in your heart, right? Remember, your soul is very magnetic. So turn on that magnet in your heart and call back all of your energy. If any of your energy scattered somewhere else, just call it all back to you. If you want to add some movement, you can, you know, bring, you kind of use your arms like you're sweeping it back to you, just calling it back. And sometimes your energy is with people that you love and care about. And, and there's nothing wrong with you helping them, of course. But the, the way that we can be the most helpful is to be whole, to be fully present. So call back your energy. And then your roots, as they go deep into the earth, we're just setting that intention to release anything that is not yours. Remember yesterday I showed you that little diagram, that little drawing and of our parts. And there were some parts in there that were not ours. And so very lovingly, you're just setting the intention of letting that energy go that isn't yours and trust not only your soul, but the soul. If if you are, if you happen to be holding other people's parts, those people have a soul that loves them unconditionally. They have guardian angels, they have allies. So those parts going back to where they, to their rightful owner, their soul. And we call on all of those divine beings, especially those that are really our mentors for being in a loving relationship with our inner child, an empowered relationship with our inner children, really. You know, including Mother Mary, including Kuan Yin, including Jesus, Ascended Master Jesus. He has so much of his child energy uh, embodiment including the guardian angels and archangels, including Mary Magdalene, who's got such a fiery inner teenager and so many others. And we call on, of course, Father, Mother, God, Creator, Creatrix, Universe, Source, Divinity, Great Mystery, whatever you call that truth that is that love that has that is our source to bless our day three, to bless our whole journey, to bless our day three. And so as you bring your hands to your heart, I invite you to already tune in and notice what inner child, maybe there's more than one, is really present for you today. And maybe you're not sure yet, that's okay, but just start to ask the question, hmm, what inner child, inner children is here present And what does this inner child need from you today? And what is this inner child wanting to release, to let go of? And with that, we bring the palms of our hands together and we bow to each other and our own heart. And we begin with a namaste. Namaste, everyone. So I'm just going to check the chat to see if I've missed anything. Deborah says, me too. My inner teen came to me in my dreams last night. Yes, my inner teen dressed me today. So, I mean, you can't really tell what I'm wearing, but I'm wearing a crop top, my burgundy skinny jeans, my Joan of Arc pendant, because talk about a powerful teenager, and my snake earrings. It was kind of a toss up between my teenager and my seven year old. They both wanted to dress me. We went with the teenager. But yes, I'm really feeling her. Jill is saying her four year old, seven year old, 11 year old. Yeah. So, you know, as we begin, the topic of inner child obviously is not a new one, right? It's been around for such a long time. 
And so today we're going to really talk about it from the perspective of your soul's medicine and of you sharing your soul's medicine. Remember that in the beginning of our five-day journey, I said that this five days are designed to catapult you, quantum leap you to take action. It's not meant to just be consumed. Like, oh, this is so interesting. Let me just consume, consume, consume. No, it's meant to create transformation, to spur action for you to share your soul's medicine. So we're specifically having a conversation about how our inner child, inner children, how they help us or hinder us, but they only hinder us because they need our attention. So I want to tell you a little quick story. And this is from, it's, it's like an ascended master story. So the ascended masters are, you know, in Buddhism, I really feel the term bodhisattva is very similar. It's an ascended master is an unconditionally loving being who led a human life. They chose to come down to earth, had many, many lifetimes here, and through their legacy of love that they created, right? They created a legacy of love through their actions, through their life, and then they ascended. They ascended to merge into source, into divinity, to release their ego. However, they decided that they didn't want to just ascend and merge into source and go on in their merry evolution, but they decided that they really wanted to help humanity, that they were here to help us because they understood how challenging this human journey is. And so the ascended masters include masters from all different spiritualities. Religions have been created around certain ascended masters, but they really didn't come to create religion. Right, that was something that humans did. And there's some good things about religions, and there's also some awful things about religions, as we've seen throughout history. So ascended masters include, you know, ascended masters like Mother Mary, like Mary Magdalene, like Kuan Yin, like Green Tara, like Hathor, like Isis, like Jesus, like Buddha, like Krishna. There's so many. And so the reason I'm bringing this up as I was preparing, this really came through. One of the spiritual books, you know, I've studied spirituality. I'm a student of it, you know, for lifetimes, really. I'm sure many of you have as well. One of the books that means a lot to me in this lifetime is the Sophia Code. There's others like Course in Miracles. There's many. But what's interesting about the Sophia Code is it talks about you take a journey through the lives of different ascended masters, right? And so there's the first chapters, which are all about your, your, that we are ascended masters and training, basically. And then every chapter goes through different ascended masters, I'm going to get to the connection to our inner child, okay? So we start with Isis and, you know, we learn about her story, but it's not just learning it. It's like you then receive activations and initiations and you really tune into mentoring with Ascended Master Isis. Then we go to Hathor and then we go to Green Tara and then we go to Mother Mary and they each kind of go up through the chakras. Then we go to Mary Magdalene, which is right at the throat chakra. And Mary Magdalene, Ascended Master Mary Magdalene, you know, she of a thousand angels, as she's named there. You know, we this is a channeled book. So you're reading messages from these Ascended Masters. And Ascended Master Mary Magdalene, if you know anything about her, she lived, you know, quite a lifetime, that last lifetime that we know of, right? Uh, partners to Jesus, you know, mentored with Mother Mary in some really dark times in the planet. And she was fiery like lightning bolt and so when you read that chapter and you connect with mary magdalene and she's basically like you're a you're you're light what is her i have her cuff i'm not wearing it right now but it's like you know lightning for revolutionary change it's like she's like this revolutionary she's a magdalena right joan of arc was magdalena magdalenas incarnate in the darkest of times to come and bring their light and so you read her chapter and you mentor with Mary Magdalene and you're like all like, okay, yes, I'm going to go share my soul's medicine. Oh my gosh, yes, I'm here to be in the darkest of places and share my light. But then right after Mary Magdalene, what ascended master shows up? Right around your third eye, Kuan Yin. And Kuan Yin comes sharing her story of trauma in childhood, her story of being seven years in the forest of her grief, and really sharing the, not even importance, the non-negotiable essentialness, I don't know if that's a word, of 
partnering with our inner child so we can be the leaders that we're here to be. It's very jarring to go from Mary Magdalene, you're all like, yes, yes, yes. And then Kuan Yin comes and you're like, wait, what? Inner child? It's very intentional how the divine created this order. Because this was really saying like, oh, yes, 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 yes. Share your medicine. This is so great. But then Kuan Yin comes and the only way you can truly share your medicine with the most integrity, the most love, the most power, the most impact, the most healing is with your inner child. And so like I was crying the whole, the first time I read that chapter, I was just like in tears, like literally water was just coming out of my eyes. And you know, it's Kuan Yin, she of a thousand waters, right? And so then after that is white buffalo woman. And then you're like, whoosh, you take off. So I'm sharing that because for you to understand, I just feel like that really illustrates how important our inner child work is. It's not just like, oh, like a cool thing to do so we feel better or we can play and have fun. That's great. But it's really essential. It's like non-negotiable. When you look at the leaders of the world, when you look at the people who are making decisions that often are harming the world, we know that that is caused from a non-integrated inner child an inner child that's perhaps throwing a tantrum inside because it really needs love and attention. And so I want you to really understand how important this is. And by the way, I'm starting the Sophia Circle journey next Tuesday. We meet once a month. If that sounds exciting to you, I have two spots left, right? So uh, if you're interested in that, I do do a free 30 minute exploratory call for that. But anyway, so this is where we begin. Your inner child is essential. And so I want you to think about, you know, I was writing, it's like I came up with my plan. And then, of course, as soon as that was done, like my inner child, it was, there was all this like um, conversation coming from the child aspect of our soul. So our soul knows, right? Knows our human journey, understands the human journey. And our soul can appear to us in different aspects. And one of the aspects of our soul is our a child aspect of our soul. And this child aspect of our soul is very important that we tune into. Now, oh, thank you, Jill. Yeah, I'm so excited that it's starting right after the year of the dragon initiates this weekend, right? And this child aspect of our soul mirrors our inner child. But our inner child is amazing and wonderful. And I have a little drawing. <laughs> but our also our inner child, I'm going to use child, but you know, I mean children, right? Also can have a lot of pain. This is what I want you to understand. There's many things. But one is your inner child is so powerful, right? That's why Jesus said, you know, like be as little children. He wasn't saying be naive, he understood that like a child is powerful. So our inner child is so powerful. That's why there's such an attack on it. Uh, and there's such an attack on actual, you know, children, right? There's so much that can happen to children because the ego structure, those energies that want to keep us from ascending and waking up, understand that. So it is in their best interest to try to keep our inner child down or, or just let us think like, oh, it's just so naive or self-indulgent to connect with our inner child. Oh, that's cute. That's cute to connect with your inner child. Let's, yeah, go ahead and do that like a little bit, but then get to work. So we want to really, I really want to dispel that myth. It's a, it's a, not only is it a lie, it's an intentional lie. And so many of my clients that I work with have such um, inner children that are so present in their lives. And sometimes they can, in the beginning, when I first start working with them, they can have such shame of it or such kind of like, you know, um, yeah, almost like they label themselves, you know, either like, oh, I'm just too sensitive or... I'm too on, like, I just feel everything so strongly. I have like no, no sensor or, or the other way around. Like, I just like my inner child is so 
strong. I just feel her pain. I can't, there's no way I can even put myself out there like this. Or my inner child's af so afraid of being disappointed or of disappointing people, right? They feel their inner child so presently. That was my story for always. I couldn't be one of those adults that could compartmentalize and be, and just kind of shove my inner children in the basement and just kind of be like, you do, I'm an adult. Even though my inner child was, was pulling the strings in the background, I could never do that. My inner child was so present. And for a long time, I so judged myself. Like, what is wrong with me? Why, why can't I just like, and it wasn't that I was immature. It was just that I felt them, my inner children so strongly. Now I understand that that's a gift, that that's part of the medicine that you bring. And so I want to show you this little drawing. And one of your action steps, I want to have you, I want to invite you to draw your own little drawing. He is my soul child, or your soul child. My soul child always wants to draw herself with a crown and hearts as usual, but then also like all these wings, like layers of wings. And sometimes she also wears a dress, but there's all of this, you know, like wings, crown, power, right? She's in the soul plane. And I wrote some of the words I wrote that she was like, okay, vitality, joy, faith, playfulness, creativity, imagination, innocence, love, truth, purity, right? So it's like shh, that energy. And I want to kind of expand on those a little bit. Did I say joy? Yeah, joy. So joy, and what I tuned into that is like wonder at all things, this sense of wonder, right? So as I say these, just kind of tune into like, oh yeah. And how do you bring that into your work when you share your medicine? Play, right? Manifest through ease and lightheartedness. Remember, this is our soul child. I've certainly experienced that. And I've also experienced the opposite of that, where I'm like, oh, I want to create this result. And it's so much work. I have to put so much effort. But our soul child knows, ooh, you can manifest through ease and lightheartedness. Not only can you, that's the, that's the way we're meant to manifest. And it's the way that we can manifest genius solutions. So, so I want you to understand, start to understand like, whoa, how this inner child is so important because the problems of the world are so big that the intellect cannot solve them. If the intellect could solve them, they would be solved, but they're not solved. What can solve them is our soul tapping into our soul's wisdom. And one of the most important aspects is our soul child aspect. So, so whatever your medicine is, you know, whether you're helping people to heal from trauma or you're helping, you know, people connect with their inner child or you're create, or you want to build a holistic healing center or you're writing a book when you are tapped into your soul child, you're not just, it's not just going to be written from your intellect. It's going to bring in this joy, this play, this, this ability to tap into new paradigm solutions. Faith, right? Our soul child has so, it's this faith. And I put faith to move mountains, literally. Like I know when I look at my life, in some of the places where I was and where I am now, I know that so much of that was coming from that child aspect of my soul that had faith when things seemed so dark and so bleak and people around me basically had written me off. You know, for example, you know, when I was pregnant at 19, you know, I wasn't applauded for that, as you can imagine. I, it wasn't planned like consciously. I know now that was just part of my journey, my curriculum. And the people that were the closest to me at the time were very upset with me. 
And even people who weren't close to me, just seeing me, this Latina young woman, pregnant. And at 19, I looked like I was 14. You know, like I've always looked younger than my age. And at 19, like I see pictures of myself and I'm like, oh my gosh. And so there was even more judgment. And so it was, I could have really just believed all that that my life was over, I'd ruined my life, I wasn't going to graduate college, I wasn't going to do anything with my life, blah, you know, on and on and on and on and on. And yet, it was, it was many things, but it was absolutely that child aspect of my soul that was like, nope, somehow this is all going to work out. And that isn't to say that I didn't feel despair or all of the things. I absolutely did. But there was that spark that kept moving me forward. And so really think about that for you, right? That faith that's so powerful. Imagination, right? That this Our soul child has that imagination that is like unstoppable, it can imagine solutions that our brain cannot. Like my, again, if I just go back to that same example, maybe that's why my teen was so activated, so up this morning because she knew I was going to be sharing this example because I was still a teen at the time. You know, like my intellect could just be like, there's no way. I'm 19. I just got pregnant. My family's not being supportive at all. There was just all these facts that could just be like, there's no way I'm going to, because at that time, my big goal was I, I really wanted to graduate college. And it was like, my intellect couldn't see a way out. There was no, nothing seemed like a possibility. And there were a whole bunch of other things that I don't really feel the need to share in this moment that were also obstacles in that moment. And so, but my genius inner child with her imagination, my soul child was like, oh, this is no problem at all. There's going to be all these things you can't even imagine, but I can, right? So there's that love, unconditional love. Your soul child is unconditionally loving and she is unconditionally loving. And again, I'm using the pronoun she, but again, or these aspects are beyond gender, you know, whatever feels right to you. But your inner soul child this is the aspect of our soul that when we tap into it like she literally loves everyone like she just and i don't mean it in a creepy weird way but this aspect of us can see other people's inner child and so even if you're looking at someone that you're like judging or you're thinking oh my gosh that person is creating so much harm in the world or that person is doing awful things, or even people who have done awful, horrible things. It's not that your soul child is like, oh, that's okay, that's not a problem. It's not that, but it's like your soul child has this like focus, can see, can see that inner child in everyone. And so has this pure love for everyone. And this is essential as you share your medicine. Truth. Your soul child is a truth teller. She can see through all illusion. She can see through all BS, including our own, right? So this is a really important thing for you to know. So if there's any part of your, if you're, whenever we are like lying to ourselves, deluding ourselves, right? So for example, I will see this often when I'm, when I see a potential client and they're like, I really want to share my medicine, but I just don't have time. Like I'm, there's, you know, all these people need me. I'm just so busy. I set an intention that I'm going to do this. And then three weeks pass and I haven't done it, but they're here for this breakthrough consultation, right? They scheduled that with me because they want to talk about it because they want to solve for that. They're like, what is going on? Why can't I do this? And often that restlessness, they feel that like, because the thing is, if you're in your life and you're taking care of everyone else in your life, but you're happy and that makes you happy and you're satisfied, then there's no problem. Awesome. Maybe that is part of your service right now. You're meant to just really be helping everyone else. Like that's part of your medicine. 
So there's no problem. But if you're helping everyone else and you're feeling resentful or you're feeling sad or you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I know I meant to share this, but I just can't seem to find the time, then that's where the problem is. And that's where your inner child and, and this is, you know, this is your soul child, but this is also your inner child will keep poking and poking and poking and poking and creating whatever drama she needs to create so that you stop and you listen and you recognize, okay, I can't keep putting this off any longer, right? And so our inner child is a truth teller. She will, you can ignore her for a little bit. You can keep going, 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 and going like, okay, I'll get to you, I'll get to you, I'll get to you. But at some point, if you don't listen to her, trying to find a way to say this without swearing, but it's like, it's she's just, she's just going to make a scene. You know, it's just going to happen. Whether it's your body breaks down, you blurt something out inappropriate at someone, you sabotage and overspend, you overeat, whatever ends up happening, that finally you're like, oh my gosh, what's been going on? And your inner child's like, I've been here trying to get your attention. I've been here the whole time. Okay, so she's a truth teller. Innocence, not from, you know, innocence and purity are very misunderstood. They've been like co-opted by religion into something really icky. But innocence, it's like you're, you know, as the Sophia Code says, you're unstoppable, unshakable innocence. No matter what has happened, you carry that with you. And so does everybody else. And purity is this purity of intention. This is really important when you're sharing your soul's medicine. It's like to really be honest with ourselves. Okay, I want to share my medicine, but let me be honest with myself. There's parts of me that are still very attached to getting attention, to getting, you know, applause, to making people happy and making sure they don't get upset with me with how I'm sharing my medicine to making sure I don't disappoint people, to making sure I don't make a fool of myself. Oh my gosh, let's not do that, right? So our soul child really keeps us, keeps that truth so that we know, because guess what? All of that's going to happen. People are going to judge you. You are going to disappoint people. People are going to be like, who does she think she is? People are going to say like, wait, I don't think you know what you're talking about. Like all of those things will happen. Like if they've all happened to me. They've happened to every person I coach. They just happen. That's what happens. It's part of the leadership journey. It's part of sharing your soul's medicine. There's also going to be people who love you and who are so grateful for you and are like, oh my gosh, you're my answered prayer. And that's beautiful too. But you can't do this work because you need that to happen. And that's why this is so important. That's why Kuan Yin comes after Mary Magdalene, right? That's why she's like, whoa, whoa, wait, before you go out there in the world and save the world, you've got to do your inner child work. If not, you're just going to be one of those other powerful people that ends up just at worst abusing their power and at best just continuing the same paradigm, right? And so what does this mean Really, the practice for today, it's, an, it's a part two to yesterday's practice, right? Yesterday, we talked about blending with your soul, um, blending from your parts. And so today is the same. It's like we're unblending from those child parts. So we're going to do an inner journey so that to, to go in and, and see what inner child part, maybe it's more than one, needs your attention right now is like wanting, and maybe you're, and I, I don't mean like, it's got to necessarily be like, oh my gosh, this inner child part needs me to like revisit this really traumatic event. And it's going to be so intense and heavy. And maybe there's that, but most of the time your inner child might literally just need you to sit and play with her. Your inner child might be saying, Hey, I've been suggesting you teach this class for months and months now, and you're still putting it off. Or maybe your inner child saying, hey, I've been telling you to let go of that, like stop doing that or stop, you know, end that responsibility that you've been having that's taking so much of your time because we're supposed to be doing this. Or your inner child might be like, you need to stop eating that because like it really feels bad in my body, right? Or your inner child might be like, I really want to go eat that. 
And then you, you know, you are the adult, so you get to see, like my inner child so craves ice cream, but I cannot have dairy. It just messes up my stomach so bad. So, you know, it's been really important to find vegan ice cream, which I have not found good one in Mexico. That's been very sad for me. <laughs> so when I went to Seattle, oh my gosh, uh, back in December to visit our youngest son, I had the biggest, it was coconut brownie ice cream. It was gluten-free and vegan. It was delicious. I ate the most ice cream in one sitting I've ever eaten. And my inner children, I think they were all like in bliss. And I kept telling Greg, I don't care how many calories this have. I don't care. I know I'm not going to get sick from eating this much ice cream because I'm just so happy and it feels so good. And I didn't get sick. I mean, Greg was like in shock, like, I can't believe you ate all that ice cream. <laughs> but, you know, you you need to tune into what your your inner child needs. So let's do this inner journey. And then we'll have time after to really break down what the practice is and to, you know, for you to share what came up for you. And, oh, and I want to say too, that if you need help with this, you know, this is what I help my clients with, not just the inner child, but all the parts. And it's one of those things that it's so helpful to have someone walk with you through this journey. It's like, I remember one of my clients once called me a Sherpa. She's like, you're like a Sherpa. And I didn't even know what that was at the time, but I, so I was like, wait, what? And a Sherpa is like someone who often, like when you go climb like Mount Everest or do some real intense hike, or even here in Mexico, like when we, you might go on this bird walk, but it's not just like a bird walk through the streets. Like they take you up to this mountain and these like paths that nobody's walked through hardly anyone. And they can kind of walk you to see like, oh, you're going to see this bird over here and this bird over here. And these are people that have walked this path over and over and over so they can help you. So you don't fall in that hole. So you don't take that turn. That's going to be this very long detour that you're just going to be so tired and miss seeing all the cool birds, you know, like it's, that's what the Sherpa does. And so she was calling me a Sherpa. She's like, is that's what you do in the coaching? It's like, you can help me save time because you've walked this path so much. And I was like, she's right. I am a Sherpa. If I start calling me that, people are going to be very confusing. They're going to be like, wait, what did she do? So anyway, that is all to say that, remember, I offer that free breakthrough consultation. I will put the link at the end. I have a few slots left in February, but even if you go on there and you're like, oh my gosh, either those times don't work for me or she doesn't have any more times, email me. Don't be afraid to do that and say like, I really want to schedule a session and I might be able to figure something out or something might've canceled or something. Okay. So let's go in everyone. We're brave. So I invite you to take a few deep breaths. I'm just going to burn a little. Pause. Bring your awareness to your heart and at your heart, visualize a beautiful golden light. And in this moment, for whatever reason, I'm literally seeing like a heart, like a Valentine's Day heart. It's like a gold heart and it's like a spotlight. It's radiating out all these hearts into the ground in front of you, creating this golden path. And as you see this path, you're suddenly standing on it. And you see all these hearts. It's like a path made of these golden drawings of hearts. It's this golden heart path. And you're standing there on the path. And as you walk on the path, you suddenly come across this beautiful garden. There's a gateway and you know to enter this gate. It's very beautiful. And it's the most beautiful garden. There's beautiful trees. There's all of these flowers. There's flowering trees. And what's so interesting about this garden that I'm noticing is parts of the garden are very manicured, like very like precise, like, ooh, it's got roses and 
tulips and colors you've never seen. But then other parts of the garden are more of a wild garden, right? It's like very, but also equally beautiful, right? That it's like, oh my gosh, all these beautiful wildflowers and it isn't manicured, but everything's growing beautifully. So everything is represented here in this garden. There's trees that are are flowering trees. There's other trees that have fruit. That there's other trees that are just these beautiful leaves. There's willow trees. There's oak trees. It's somehow this amazing garden. And there's parts that are very sunny, and there's parts that are have more shade. There's different types of benches. There's benches that look very kind of fancy and elegant, and there's others that look just very rustic and equally beautiful but just in a different way there's some areas that have just like blankets on the ground that you know you know you could sit on so you're gonna look at this beautiful garden that is in the soul plane created just for you and you're walking right now to whatever part of the garden is calling to you maybe there's a particular flower a rose an orchid a tulip a lily or maybe there's a particular tree or a particular bench or blanket, but there's gonna be something that you look at it and it's like glowing, it's calling you, it's calling you and calling you. So you're gonna to walk to it now. And so as you arrive there to that part of the garden, you're going to find a seat, whether you're sitting on the floor or on a bench. And just take a few breaths there like, ah, oh, what a beautiful garden your soul created for you. And then as you are taking the beauty in, you start to see in front of you these beautiful sparkles of light. They look like little sparkles, glitter swirling and swirling. And they start to take shape. And eventually it starts to take the shape of your soul child. So for me, I see, you know, my little soul child with her crown. And she actually also has a wand with a star at the top of the wand, at the tip of the wand. And she's got these beautiful wings. They almost look, they look more like butterfly wings than angel wings, different layers and colors. And she's got this beautiful dress. She looks about nine. It's this aspect of my soul child. But notice how yours shows up. And she walks towards you, or maybe she flies or floats towards you. And she just has so much love. She's got all of those qualities, right? Joy and wonder and adventure and purity and innocence and creativity and strength and vitality and unstoppable imagination and faith and trust and love and so much more. And she's looking at you with so much love and joy. And you realize that she has a gift for you. However, she's letting you know and whether she lets you know telepathically or with a feeling or with words that she can't, how is she saying this? You can't receive the gift yet because there's an inner child part or maybe more than one that needs your attention first. Because the gift that your soul child has for you is a gift connected to your soul's medicine. And so as she stands there Right, she, she steps to, next to you and she's like, let's welcome what is the inner child or inner children that are needing your attention right now, that are needing your love. And so as you ask that question in front of you, you see what inner child is it? 
six, seven, 15, 19, one, just look. And create a very safe environment for this inner child. Like it just, whether this inner child needs a little blanket or needs some light or needs some water or needs some food or needs a little animal to feel safe, just create a very safe environment for this inner child part. And as you see this inner child, make sure that she can see you. And again, I apologize, your inner child can be a boy. It could be use a pronoun of they, so she, he, they, whatever it is. You, you use the right, what feels right for this part of you. And so when this part is aware of you, and remember, your soul child is there and she's just beaming so much love and acceptance. She's not in a rush at all. And so if you feel rushed, if you're like, okay, I need to heal this part, that's another part. So just breathe and send that part compassion and just trust we're in the soul plane. Everything's unfolding in the perfect way, even if it doesn't make logical sense. And so now look at this inner child and you're asking, first of all, you're thanking her or him or they saying, thank you so much for showing up, for showing yourself to me. What do you want me to know? And then you're just going to listen. What do you want me to know right now? And your child might answer in words, in a feeling, in images, in a memory. Just, just listen. And then ask your buddy or him or they, what do you need from me? How can I help you? And if you need help, you can even ask like, is there something you need to let go of? Is there something I need to help you let go of? Is there something I need to witness for you? Is there something you need me to bring to you to do more of? Just ask those questions. And then you're asking, and remember, this is recorded. So if you have to come back and do it again, I just, you know, let your inner child know that we're not going to rush. If she's like, I just need more time from you. That's totally fine. But in this moment, ask the question, how are you helping me share my soul's medicine? How are you helping me share my soul's medicine? And remember, you may receive the, the answers as a word, as a feeling, as an image. And it's okay if you don't receive the answer quite yet. It will become clear. And so now you're going to ask this little child part, or it might be a teen part, whatever it is, if she or he or they feel safe to receive a blessing from your soul child. It's okay if they say no, if they're like, no, I don't know, I'm not ready. That's okay. We're not going to push it at all. But just ask and have her see, 
have this child part, see your soul child, how, you know, she just has so much love for her. However, she shows up, you know, for me, it's with the wings and the crown and the wand. And, you know, I'm really just feeling Mother Mary and Kuan Yin, these divine mother ascended masters just bringing in so much love and safety. And so as this inner child, if she would be willing, he or they would be willing, feel ready, feel open, want to receive a blessing from your soul child or and or from Mother Mary or Kuan Yin or these ascended masters. And it's absolutely okay if she says no, but just check. And if she, he or they say yes, then just allow that to happen now. And if your inner child says no, let her know it's okay. At a later time, if she changes her mind, you can totally do this. So let's just hold space for whatever the answer was as this, our inner children receive a blessing, those that said yes, that they're ready for it. And now ask your inner child part where, as we get ready to close this, like where they want to be. So in your inner world, in the soul plane, you can create anything for your inner child. So sometimes our inner children have been stuck in a basement or in a house where they experience trauma or hiding under a bed or, but now you can ask your inner child, where would, what do you want me to create for you? Maybe she wants a beautiful garden or a beautiful bedroom or a playground. Just ask and then create it. Because remember, in your soul, in the soul plane, you can create whatever. Make sure your inner child feels safe and happy. Well, let me rephrase that. Your inner child doesn't have to feel happy. If she's sad, that's total. Your inner child can feel whatever feelings. But just create whatever surroundings help her to feel safe and to have the experience she needs to have. And then, so as that is complete, now your soul child is in front of you and whatever unfolded with your inner child, she says, good work. That was so important. And so now receive the gift that your soul child has for you. It might be just some fairy dust that's going to activate something within you. It might be an actual, like a symbol. It might be something that she gives you. It might be a mantra. It might be a word. You might not even know yet what it is, but just open your heart to receive this gift from your soul child now. This is a gift to amplify and bless your soul's medicine. And now this beautiful soul child is helping you to integrate all that just happened and unfolded beyond your human understanding across all dimensions of time, across all four levels of your being, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. As you walk back out the garden, back to the golden path of hearts, back to your beautiful heart, back into your body, back into whatever room you're in. Take some deep cleansing breaths, stretch your body in whatever way feels good. If you have water, maybe drink some water. And if there's anything you need to write down in your journal, take a moment to do that. While you do that, I'm going to take a picture because I did not take a picture today of the of the participant name so that I can add you to the magic bowl. <laughs> mm. 
Nossa. All right. So I also um, put the link to the breakthrough session. That's the link to my February calendar. If you're feeling called to schedule that session, you know, it's a very, I've shared the format before, but it's like we start with a little meditation, a really short one um, to help us bring us to the soul plane. Right now you have that understanding. And then it's really a chance for me to listen really intently as I ask you some very specific questions. Please know that it's not a test. It's not like I'm grading you. It's for me to really be able to help see what is the actual block? What is the actual problem? Because of our parts, our parts can really think, oh, this is the problem, but it's actually something else. And then to offer you, what is the solution? And then if it feels like we'd be a good fit, I will also share with you my coaching program. All right. So I would love to hear if anything came up for you. If anything, Jill saying, thank you. Very profound. So much inner child work healing to do, but this was a good step. Yes. And what I, I'm glad you said that, Jill, because what I, I want to reassure you, not just Jill, like everyone, and I re, I'm reassuring myself as well, is that the, the beautiful and powerful thing about parts work is that when you work with one, you work with all of them. So even if you go inside and you're like, oh my gosh, I've got like 30 children that need my attention. You, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have to go to each one. If you spend quality time with one, it's like it, it just spreads into your whole inner world. I know for me, the inner child that showed up, mm, it's probably like around eight. My teenager was very present too. I'll go back and do this with her too. But she was the one that was the loudest, the like eight-year-old. And, and she was crying. And it was really what I heard. It was like, oh, she just has more crying to do. And I had to be really, really recognized that there's adult parts of me that are like, oh, come on, Kevin, we cried enough. But that's the other parts. And it was just like, oh, no, she just has more crying to do. And that's okay. That doesn't mean I'm walking around crying or I'm being with clients and I'm crying. It just was like, make time even 10 minutes or what's been really helpful for me is get my yoga mat, just lie on it, put music on. And sometimes I'm just crying. I don't even know exactly what the tears are for, but just let that happen. It's so simple. It doesn't take a lot of time, but so profound and powerful and important. Now yours might be totally different. Your, your inner child would be like, we need to play. You know, like I need to do that. Um, 11 year old, she's helping me share my soul's medicine by being fearless, but sadness is her kryptonite. Lots of tears. Yeah. And I would suspect, thank you for sharing that, that, you know, a lot of our inner children, well, well, this is really interesting. It could be sometimes that our inner children feel fear of our sadness, but what has, what is actually mostly the case is that the adult parts of us that are protecting the inner children get really, really triggered by our inner children's sadness. Because even with real children, you know, when a child is sad, it's not that they like being sad, but if they're sad and they're crying and their parent, their guardian, is just holding them and it's just like, it's okay that you're sad, take your time, cry as much as you need to. And is not shaming them, is not like, come on, get over it, or trying to, here, have some ice cream, here, have a candy, here, have a toy so you don't cry, but just normalizing sadness. Kids are okay with being sad. When it becomes a problem is when they're shamed for it, when they're not witnessed for it, when they're not given the time for it. It's the same thing with our inner children. It's more and tends to be the kryptonite of the adult parts inside of us that are like, oh, no. Don't let the inner child start crying. She'll never stop. Or I don't want to feel that. They're the ones often that need the most help. Deborah, right now she just wants time to be herself, to draw and paint. And she says where I am painting and making art now, she gets what she needs. Yes. Yes, she can be an artist. Yes, Jill, great. Yeah, absolutely. So I would love to know, you know, what did your, you know, every... What are some of the things that came up for you? Now, if you haven't been doing inner child work for some time, this can feel like a lot. 
right? And, can, and up again, another part can come up that's like, uh, I don't want to open this can of worms. It's too much. But no, it's not too much. Your soul can hold all of this. It takes way more energy. It's way more depleting to keep shoving these parts back. It's it's detrimental to our health and it it's a huge energy leak. But, you know, have compassion. If you notice that a part's coming up that's like, I'm kind of scared to do this inner child work, that's okay. Work with that part. Have compassion for that part and say, okay, what are you afraid will happen? That's a great question to ask. If you notice resistance to doing this, ask that part that has the resistance or the part that's like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna, this is gonna take months or, okay, I'll do this, but later when I have time, if you notice any of that, just ask that question, what are you afraid will happen if we do this work? And that's going to give you so much information. You'll get overwhelmed. You won't be able to continue working. It'll be too sad. People are going to judge you. You're going to become weak. I mean, who knows what they'll say. You'll abandon your family because you'll go off and play all the time. You know, just like really normalize, like hear what it is because you can then mostly be like, oh, I, I understand you have that fear, but that's totally not going to happen. I'm, I'm not going to go off on the road and just do art all day long. As fun as it is to fantasize, that's not actually what I'll do, right? It's like, you know, so really hear it. Goodbye, Jojo. Yes. Kimberly, mine says that it's safe to be beautiful. Yeah, my gift from my child, inner child was, um, well, I'm still going to discern my gift from my soul child. She said to go back in my patio and I'll get the full answer. But for my inner child, what, how she was helping me with my soul's medicine, it was like, to be able to be with people's inner children and their sadness, to not be scared of it. Now that I can be with my clients or potential clients and not try to rush them through it. I'm, I'm also not attached for it to happen, but it's like, it doesn't scare me. I'm not nervous around it or like, what if they get sad? Like, it's just like, and so she said, that's my gift. She's the, my inner child said that to me. She's like, that's my gift to you that I can help you when you're helping clients. Like I, we can be there for their inner children. And then she wanted to be Kwan Yin and Mother Mary. That's where they are, where, where my inner child is right now. So as we come to the end, what your homework, your action step for this weekend really is, is, well, if you haven't watched all the replays, I highly, I mean, what I mean is if you missed one, I'm not saying, I'm not suggesting you have to watch all the replays again unless you want to, but if you missed one, you know, watch those, catch up with that. Remember, you're receiving from your soul every day, even one minute, twice a day. That's two minutes a day. And you could do more, of course. You're receiving, you're receiving, right? You're, you're doing this. You're thinning the veil, thinning the veil. If that's all you're doing right now, because you have never done it before, or you have done it, but you're up leveling it down now, you're either doing it more times or you're doing it at a different time or you're being more present. That's more than enough. Because as you tune into the soul plane more, you're gonna have more capacity to be with your parts, right? To not get overwhelmed by them, to have spaciousness, to hear your soul's guidance. You also can practice right? Doing your parts diagrams, just I'm blending from the parts like, oh, this is really interesting. This is everything that's coming up and not making yourself bad for it or judging yourself, just knowing like, oh, okay. You can draw your soul child. Like what are the qualities of your soul child? And I just love, you know, just kind of like seeing my soul child is just sending so much love to all my inner children. Like, shh. you know how children love other children? right? It's like they're out and they're like, oh, and, and obviously I know there's bully children, but we're not talking about that. Like there's, it's like they like playing with other kids. So I feel like there's something really special when our inner child can receive love from our soul, our soul's child aspect. And of course, if you're guided to either uh, reach out about the Sophia Circle journey that starts on Tuesday, so excited, or to schedule that breakthrough consult, I would love, love for you to do that. I would love to spend time with you and talk to you that's a free one hour consult. Okay, Michelle, my gift for my soul child, she opened her hand and Firefly flew out glowing. Oh my gosh, Michelle, I just have to say in the Kuan Yin chapter, the way you're led to Kuan Yin is the Firefly. 
there's like a firefly weaving and weaving and weaving through a willow tree. So that's just so remind me of that. And I watched the firefly go into the right sky and a lot of emotions came out. It was a beautiful experience. That's so beautiful, Michelle. Thank you so much for sharing that. Okay, so I'm going to pull a card for the group, whether you're here live or watching the replay. Oh my gosh, my cards are falling. Mm, your soul child gift is time. Beautiful. That makes so much sense, right? The other day, my, Greg was telling me like, like kind of having this reflection talk about how as adults, time goes by so fast. But when you're a child, I don't know if you remember this. I remember time going so slow and sometimes it was very frustrating. But it's like, I do think that's a gift from our inner child. They just have spaciousness of time. Okay, here we go. What is the message from our inner child, our soul inner child? Or soul child. Mm -hmm. I think this is the card you'd gotten, Joe. Number 28, dark night of the soul. Transformation, awakening, tower. And there's something that it says in the book, I hadn't noticed. Okay, I'm going to get my glasses, people, my reading glasses. This is not my ten teenager. Well, my teenager, I needed glasses since I was in fifth grade. So, but it says she dug what? It's like very blurry. She, she dug caverns in her heart until she found the light. That's what it says. She dug caverns in her heart until she found the light. Look at this. I love this. Can I can't, can't look at the screen with that. <laughs> look at her heart glowing. So beautiful. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, everyone. And I hope to see you on Monday. Okay, Monday, I believe it's at 12 and then Tuesday it's at three. It's like a whole different time, but I'll put that when I'm sending the replay, I'm sending the replay links for all of them. So you'll have in this email replay link for number one, for number two, and then for number three. And as I said, these are only going to be up for a week. So they'll, the link will not work um, past next Wednesday or Thursday. I'll, I'll look at my calendar. But if you're in the Answering Your Inner Calling private Facebook group, they'll be there so you can access them whenever. Okay, perfect. All right, bye everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye, go have fun with your inner children. Bye-bye. <laughs>